Hey guys, welcome to this lecture. So today we will discussing about UDP header. So in last lecture we have covered each and everything about the TCP header. So the next protocol uh, which is available in layer 4 is your TCP, I mean it's your UDP header. So it stands for user datagram protocol, okay. Right, so there are certain differences which I have already listed here. Okay, so we will discuss everything in detail. So if we talk about the UDP header, so it is also, you know, 32 bits long. Okay, but there are, you know, uh, only four fields which are there in the UDP header. So the first field is source port. What is the source port number? It is of two bytes. And it can, you know, vary from 60 to 65,535. Similarly, you have destination port and the range is same and then you have length what is the length of the uh, entire you know uh, segment and then the checksum field to verify whether this header is ending at the 32 bit boundary okay so the header is very short and the header length is all about 8 bytes so you can say 2 byte 2 byte 2 byte 2 byte so it, if you are gonna add all these fields it will give you the 8 bytes so unlike TCP, the header length was, you know, it can vary from 20 to 60 bytes, but in UDP, the header length will be 8 bytes, right? There, there are no UDP options available. So this is what you have in UDP header. So it is very, you know, easy to learn. Okay, so now we will discuss certain differences between the UDP and uh, TCP. So TCP is connection oriented protocol, right? And UDP is connection less protocol. I mean, we will, uh, the server, the client and server, will not establish any connection first and then you know transfer the data between them so there is no tcp i mean in tcp we have tcp three way handshake but in udp there is no handshake is there right so uh, reliability of the information is high you know is very high in tcp i mean tcp will tcp will guarantee you that you know it will definitely deliver the information to you know to your uh, receiver but uh, in UDP it is less reliable I mean it will not guarantee that you know whether the information will reach the destination or not because we won't be getting any acknowledgments from the uh, receiver or something like that so it's like a one-way communication right if I'm sending something okay so I will be believing that you know uh, the destination must have received it that's it so if we talk about the usage so you know so basically the applications which require higher reliability are going to use tcp and uh, your games or your video streaming you know where uh, we can afford some packet loss so that particular thing will be you know done over the udp protocol right so let's say two three packets are missing from the video streaming so because that is the real time information you know so nothing uh, i mean we need not to store that information right we need not to uh, download that particular in information in our hard drive so that is the streaming so we can afford that so that's why we can use udp for games and video streaming right so header length tcp header length can vary from 20 to 60 bytes but UDP header length is 8 bytes okay so TCP is a heavyweight protocol because you know we first we will be establishing the connection then we will be sending acknowledgements for each data byte you know which is being transferred from the sender and which has been received by the receiver okay and uh, there are certain fields you know we will be doing the uh, some error you know error i mean we would be doing some error checking methods i mean we would be doing flow controls the processing cost is high in tcp so all these uh, you know all these features uh, in combine uh, makes this protocol as a heavyweight protocol on the other hand udp is a very lightweight protocol okay so we need less uh, amount of resources to process UDP packets correct so the processing cost is high in TCP and the processing cost is very less in UDP and there is a flow control mechanism in TCP but there is no flow control mechanism in UDP and uh, error 
error checking and recovery is possible in TCP, but there is no error checking and recovery possible in UDP. So simply if UDP packets uh, are, you know, I mean, they are corrupted, so we will simply discard them, right, without informing the sender. And uh, yeah, so, you know, so we establish stream in the TCP. All the packets are, you know, linked. Uh, I mean, they are in order. One, two, three, they are linked together. But on the other end, in UDP, each packet is, you know, responsible individually. So these uh, packets are not linked together. And, you know, it can depend upon the application. So application will take care of the order itself. So we need not to worry about the order of the packets in UDP. So let's... Uh, verify the information through Varsha captures so this is the UDP uh, packet so let me show you UDP header so again so layer 2 layer 3 layer 4 so now you can see instead of transmission control protocol we can see user datagram protocol okay and if you're gonna uh, you know expand it you will see the source port field is there destination port field is there and the length the length is telling you the entire length of the segment, not the header length, right? And the checksum is there, okay? So these are the Wireshark options. So the header will contain source port, destination port, length, checksum, correct? And to calculate the header, le header length, um, what you need to do? So here you can see it's saying 268 bytes. And in data field, you can see it is telling 260 bytes. So minus 268. Uh, you know, so minus 260 from 268 and you will get the header length which is 8 bytes Similarly for this packet 332 324 if you gonna minus it it will give you 8 bytes similarly here 268 260 right and if you expand the data field so this is the data which is being Transferred so you can see this is the information which is required by the application right so the length is 260 bytes so i think uh, that's enough and there is nothing more in the udp header in next lecture we will discuss the you know tcp connection establishment and what are the different uh, states of the tcp connection you know and how do we gracefully terminate the tcp connection okay and uh, after that we will cover ip headers thanks for your time bye bye